episode two of Foraging and Feasting with me, Vix, from the Family Foraging Kitchen, and we're bringing you into November. We are going to show you the best five ingredients that I've been using in my kitchen, and when we go back, we're going to be making a warming, Bavarian-style wild noodle soup with some wild spiced bread dumplings. And this is a real dish today that shows you how we can eat for virtually nothing using the wonderful free selection of ingredients that we have on this beautiful peninsula. So here we are then, our first wild edible of November, and we bring you here to the coast because we are looking at seaweed. Now, some people will look at this rock and just see a big brown squidgily mess of stuff that will get caught around their ankles when they're swimming or will be in their way when they're on the beach in the summer having a lovely relaxing time. Stop thinking of it as something that's in your way and start thinking of it as a beautiful wild food source. This is the future of sustainable eating and this is one of our most nutrient dense and rich ingredients of the winter so if you live by the coast like I do come down here and look at what is on offer we have over 800 varieties of edible seaweed in the UK and just here down at King Sand on the Rain Peninsula there are about 10 to 15 that you can be eating in your diet regularly so I'm going to teach you today about one that is really easy to find and it doesn't matter if you come down and the tide is mostly in because this is a high tide line vegetable Seaweeds grow at different tidal points. Sometimes when the tide is really far out, we'll take you through the seaweeds down there. But today we're taking you to Channel Rack. Now Channel Rack is this beautiful brown seaweed. It's very soft and supple. There are lots of different types of rack. Some of them are very hard, some of them are very dense, but this one is a soft and subtle one. So when you're harvesting seaweeds, very important that you're cutting them away from the rock, keeping what we call the hold fast, on because the hold fast is like the root and if you were just to pull that seaweed off the rock you are taking the seaweed's life you are basically ending it whereas if you cut through what we call the fronds which are like the leaves of the seaweed you're allowing it to re regrow and grow back so we're practicing sustainable harvesting so you're coming down to the rock now how do i know that this is channel rack and not a different type of seaweed so we're having a look. It is soft and supple and brown, and on the very edges, the very ends of the rack itself, we've got these little forks, like two little forked prongs. prongs. It also then has almost an orangey hue to it, so it's not just completely brown, and it finishes at these wonderful little air sacs at the end. So we're having a look. It's soft, it's brown, it's got its little forks, and it's got its orangey hue. And here, if you look at this piece, you'll see, if I hold it up, those little reproductive sacs at the end there, okay? That little orange piece. So this is gonna be ingredient that we're going to put in to what we're cooking today, which is our Bavarian wild noodle soup. And the reason why we're putting the rack in there is because it's full of every single nutrient that your body needs as a human being to survive. It's full of omega-3, it's full of iron, iodine, protein, fiber, and it's gonna give this rich umami taste to the dish. So we're looking for this lovely, beautiful, brown and orange, channel rack okay how much do you need how much how many people are you feeding i'm going to take probably about a good a good couple of handfuls to feed three people for lunch so come down with your scissors cut directly off the rock and you've got your beautiful ingredient and i'm going to show you how to use that back at the kitchen number two on our list then is the wonderful plantain. Now plantain is one thing that I say to people, if you're going to remember anything from my wild food and foraging walks, make it be this one. Not only is it a cure-all for many ailments and many skin conditions and complaints, but it is a great wild edible. Now I'm going to talk about it first of all for its edibility and then I'm going to tell you a little bit about how we can utilize this plant medicinally. So looking at the plant itself then, when we pick up a leaf, it has this lance-like leaf and then it has ribs going up the back. So if we look at the structure of the leaf, it has these skinny like ribs going up the back. Now, because of those ribs, the older the leaf when we're cooking with them, if I pull one out now, you can see it's a little bit like dental floss. So if you're putting that into a soup or a stew and it gets all stuck in your teeth, it's not pleasant, okay? But if you're camping and you forget your toothbrush, you could use this as a dental floss. But the young plantain leaves, if I pick out a baby one here now, these little young baby ones here. The ribs are actually very soft and when we eat them, they have a taste much like a mushroom. They have a very meaty mushroom taste. Mm. 
it's delicious. It really is like mushrooms. Like when you take a bite of a raw button mushroom, that's exactly the taste you get from a young baby plantain leaf. So I do like to use this as a garnish on soups, or I like to use it as a flavoring in bread or dumplings. And I like to chop it up and I like to put it into things like bread dough. It works incredibly well. The larger leaves, if you're going to eat them, you can put them onto a baking tray, line them up on a baking tray, a light spray of oil, like an olive oil is fine, a little sprinkle of salt, and then sprinkle on something like a Chinese five spice um, or a paprika, and you get a lovely crisp. Put them in the oven, five minutes on a low heat, delectable crisps, really good for you, crunchy, and then your teeth just go through those little um, ribs, don't get stuck at all, they're wonderful. Now, as a medicinal, if you take your plantain leaves, and you take a few in your hand and you roll them into a ball like this crushing them up to release all of their juice oh just dropped it ah <laughs> keep going don't drop it when you're on film keep going keep going you get this bright green juice now that bright green juice will take away a, um, a stinging nettle sting in about 30 seconds it will take away a bee sting it can take it can soothe acne psoriasis eczema and all these skin complaints it is a magic heal all um, so i do recommend that if you're out foraging put that in your pocket and then you get a nice magical healing balm now it's just started to rain so we're going to run up into the woodlands and find some nice things to talk to you about under the trees. So that is ribwort planting. Number three then, we have a little bit of drizzle above our heads, but we're in the tree cover and in the woodland, we found the next wild edible we're going to talk about. And that is our three cornered garlic otherwise known as three-cornered leek. Now you see it discussed on foraging forums and foraging pages as both terms. Don't get hung up on it. It is an allium and it is known as both, okay? So let's have a look, let's pull one out and have a look at the structure from root to leaf. So it looks almost like a spring onion. It's got this bulb on the bottom with its little roots like an onion and then it has this green um, stem and the stem it's got three corners, hence its name, three corners. When you look at it, it's got a, a raised edge on the top. So we say three corners because one, two, three, if that makes sense. Now, when you're walking along a hedgerow or walking along a bank, it's very easy to just walk past this and dismiss it as a kind of grass. And it does look like that. When it goes to flower, you'll smell it before you see it. It'll have this really oniony smell. But even if you crush the leaves and bring them to your nose, it is a very distinct onion smell. That is an allium. Now, people get mis mistaken at this time of year, maybe potentially for young bluebells or snowdrops. All you have to do to know the difference is feel about three corners, and to smell. Okay, foraging, I always say this, is not just about our eyes, it's all of our senses. Smell is so important. So here we have this beautiful wild garlic, wild onion, and at this time of year, you don't really need to buy onions from the shops. All of these are just coming out, so through the winter, you've got this beautiful onion that you can put into any dish, be it a soup, a stew, a curry, a chili, a pakora, a bhaji, wonderful little ingredient. So look out for it. It's a great winter allium and it's our three cornered garlic or three cornered leek. Number four on our list then is the great magnificent wood avon, otherwise known as Herb Bennett. It is a woodland plant and you find it in dark and shady edges. And this is one of the first roots that we're going to be looking at in this series. Now, I must say that you must have permission from the landowner to dig up a root if you're foraging for it. However, Woodhaven roots are very, very shallow and close to the top of the ground. And I've never met anyone who's complained about me taking one of these from a public footpath. But do be aware that you are meant to have permission from the landowner. Now, these are the wood avens themselves. It's a very small rosette of leaves here. When they grow and they're flowers, they will have a little four petaled uh, yellow star-like flower on the top. And then when they go to seed, they have what we call a burr, almost like a burdock burr, like a Velcro seed head on the top. But these are the young plants. We're in November and this is a great time to get the root out. Now it's a good way to connect with the soil. You're putting your fingers down towards the base of the plant, really rummaging around there and feeling, and you can just slip your fingers underneath using your thumb and your index finger and then with a little bit of a little bit of muscle power you want to just aha it's coming it's coming 
difficult when it's mixed with other leaves. Oh, here we go. It's coming. Ah, and it's out. All of that. Right, so shake off the mud Ooh, and all over yourself. Now, here you go. You can see that the root is quite small and these little fronds that are coming off, okay, they're also useful. So keep that in mind. Now, if we take the woody part away, if we open this up in the middle, we are going to find a beautiful red purple like clove. Now when we get back to the kitchen I'm going to show you that. We're going to take these roots, we're going to cut them in half and I'm going to show you the, the spice inside because this is what was used like a clove. So long before we had an imported spice trade we had traditional native British spices here which were used to flavour our dishes and the clove is a wonderful warming sort of winter spice flavour that we can run through a variety of dishes be it from curry paste, spices, chives and we're going to put this into our bread dumplings for our Bavarian noodle soup recipe. So you're looking for these leaves which are rounded on the top, they've got quite a furry texture, they're quite hairy and then they run down in pairs down the stalk and then underneath this very shallow root system very stubby little small root with these fronds that come off. These fronds that are coming off here, these other bits of the root, also have that clove-like smell and flavour to them. So we can cut those off and we can use those in another way, but it's this part of the roots that we're going to be looking at for our recipe today. So that is Woodhaven, otherwise known as Herb Bennett. So here we have then the fifth and final wild edible of our November episode and this is the common mallow. Now common mallow is a glorious plant with loads of really cool fun and interesting facts. If I just take a leaf off it has a very thick and dense texture and it's kind of fleecy like a fleece blanket. It's lighter on one side than the other, so a light green and then a darker green and it can grow quite low on the ground and then into these magnificent huge almost like trees. It's got a very thick branch like stalk. Now in Israel the word for these um, mallow leaves directly translates into the term bread because in Israel they eat mallow as often as we eat bread in the west. Now how do they eat them? Many ways I'm sure. How I like to do it is sliced up and then steamed and a little bit of fresh lemon juice over the top or stir fried in a pan, some garlic, a little bit of your three-cornered garlic if you have some, these chopped up and a squeeze of lemon, a little bit of honey if you like a sweeter dish. But in our recipe today when we get back to head cue we are going to put these into our noodle Bavarian soup recipe and what that's going to do is not only give us that impact of these bright nutritious greens but they act as a natural thickener. So when we're making a soup much like corn flour will thicken a soup mallows will really bring a soup in and make it all stodgy and umptuous and thick and warming. So it's a great one for adding a bit of body and a bit of oomph to your dishes. So this is number five on our list today the wonderful common mallow leaf. So here we are back at HQ and ready to bring you the cookery section of our show today and what are we doing well? This is something that I think at this time of year is a real essential warming recipe. It's November, it's very cold and we're skint, especially those of us who have children and Christmas is coming up. So what can we do? What can we look through the cupboards and find some basic ingredients that we can make a stunning dish with the wilds that we've found today. So noodles, loads of people have these cheap noodles in their cupboard. These are pack noodles, you can get them cheap as chips, almost 20, 30p a pack if you go to the right place. Noodles. I've got a couple of eggs and I've got some stale bread rolls. You know when you get to the end of the pack and you've forgotten and there's one left in the cupboard, I'm going to show you how to use these up and make them beautiful again. I have a stock cube and I have an onion. A little bit of milk, the leftover bits of milk you have in the fridge, and that is about it. Now we're going to make a Bavarian noodle wild soup, and we're going to make some stale bread wild spiced dumplings. Sounds horrible, it's going to taste amazing, trust me. So let's look at the dumplings first. Now in here, I put some of the bread earlier, crushed it up into little pieces, and mixed it with a little bit of milk. All you need to do is take the bread, break it into little pieces, put it into the bowl, like this and then you want to splash on your milk. So you just want enough milk really to keep it together. So add a little piece at a time, little bit at a time until you're getting a sort of splodgy consistency like this. Okay, you don't want it too wet. 
Then you want to add your flavours, okay? So what have we got for in the wild? Now we found earlier our beautiful Woodhaven roots. Now, when you get the Woodhavens home, give them a little bit of wash in a bit of water. And then you want to be taking a sharp knife, taking off the leaves. Oh, this smells so beautiful. Cutting the root in half, being careful not to slice your fingers. Okay, and you'll see inside the root there, that beautiful purple clove that we spoke about earlier. This almost earthy, really rich, beautiful, almost Christmas scented clove root. So we want to get that purple piece out of the inside of the root. So I'm just gonna cut that in half. I'm gonna peel away all the pieces that we don't want. Now be careful not to cut your fingers. They can be a little bit tricky depending on the age of the roots. This one is quite young, so it's softer. Just bring away the pieces you don't need so you're left with that gorgeous little purple spice in the middle. Now they used to hang this up in their wardrobes. Back in the days we only used to have one piece of clothing to take away the smell of body odour and horses and things. So it's a, it was used almost like a deodorant in a way, but it is a beautiful, beautiful spice. So I have my little clove. I'm gonna cut that up into little pieces. As little, small as you can. And you're gonna run that into the dumpling mixture. Now you don't need an awful lot because it is quite a strong spice when it starts to infuse. That's that one. I'm gonna put the other half in. Just quickly cut off, tidy those bits. You can also use this if you have a toothache, much like you can a clove, it has the same nutritional makeup. So you can pack it into a sore tooth and it will help to take away the swelling and the pain. There we go, chop, chop, chop. And then put that in there. Now, I said wild spice, so that's our spice, but I want to get in a bit of an oniony flavour too. So we're going to come to our three cornered leeks that we found. And we're going to use those as if, let's get my cloth a minute, give that a little wipe off while we've had our spices there. So some of our three cornered garlic or three cornered leek and that's going to give a really pungent, beautiful, fresh punch to the dumplings. Try to chop them small, you don't want big long strands in your dumplings, you just want nice little pieces. In you go. That gives it a nice bit of colour as well. So mix that round. There. Now we need to add an egg. So I'm going to crack now, I'm going to make just a few dumplings for the purpose of the soup, but if you were doing it for lots of people and you have more mixture, I'd probably add two eggs and two bread rolls. I'm going to go for one, otherwise it will be far too sloppy. Oh, look at that lovely egg. What a fresh egg. Beautiful. Right, goopy, goopy, goopy. Now that's sloppy, so I'm going to add some more bread, thicken it up. And then, just to make it a bit thicker, I'm going to add some breadcrumbs. Now you can buy breadcrumbs already made, or you could whiz up the remainder of your bread in your pack and pop that in. Just gives it more of a texture, I suppose. Now for the breadcrumbs. Oh, crispy. Right, that's looking good. In a minute, we're going to roll those into lovely individual little balls. Okay. Take them out with your hand, do this like you're a juggler, and pop them ready. Just move that egg, we don't need you there. Pop them onto a board, ready to be plonked into your soup. very tactile. It's quite a nice squishy feeling in your hands actually. There we are. So I can just smell coming up my nose there that lovely allium, the lovely three-cornered garlic and I can smell the clove, the clovey smell from the Woodhavens, the Herb Bennett. 
I think dumplings are so great at this time of year. They're just moorish, aren't they? And it's like putting on a big warm coat when you've felt cold. Got that one going there. You can hear that coming to the boil. Coming on to our soup. Right, so got a few of these bits of um, three-cornered leek on our chopping board already. That's fine. That can be used up and popped into the soup pot. Pop that in, get it out of the way. I don't want to waste anything. Everything goes in. Coming onto the channel rack that we found down on the beach. Now, channel rack is a beautiful ingredient. It may look like a horrible brown sludgy mess. And a lot of people get put off by using seaweeds in their cooking because they think it looks unappealing. But actually, when you actually look at something like a channel rack, you can see that it's not just a brown mess. There's so many colors in here. There's so many different hues. There's lots of oranges. And when it hits the hot water, it's gonna change and it's gonna come almost like an emerald green. Okay, so don't be fooled by this very humble ingredient. What it is full of is omega-3. It's full of iron, it's full of iodine and all the minerals and vitamins that you need to keep you healthy and strong in these winter months. It's very, very filling. It's also got fo uh, protein and fiber. So it really is a, a real great all round winner of an ingredient. So I'm gonna put this into the water, in it goes. And what that's gonna do as it cooks is release a kind of umami flavor to the water itself, to the soup water, almost like a stock. So in you go, my beautiful rack. Now, somewhere, somewhere I put my spoon. Right, so stir that round. Pop the lid on for a moment. Now, the next ingredient we need are our wonderful mallow leaves. Now look at the size of that. This beautiful, big, fleecy blanket of a leaf. This is gonna bring our soup thicker. It will act almost like corn flour, but not only that, you'll get that lovely, umptuous flavor of the vegetable itself coming out into the stew. So we're gonna make it easy to chop by rolling them almost like you're rolling up a tea towel. Take off the very stalky sort of end, because you don't want that there. And we're gonna chop this one up. Beautiful. Okay, and it goes into our stew pot. Lovely mallow, I'm gonna do two of those, I think. So one, actually I'm gonna do three. I like mallows a lot. They're gorgeous, gorgeous, green, umptious, beautiful ingredient. Okay, turn that up a bit more. In you go. Let's give that a stir. Yeah, that's looking good already. Right. Now, you may remember from episode one that we spoke about Alexander's. And I have some young, fresh Alexander stalks with me today. And I like to use things that are in season. These were all looking so young and fresh and vibrant in the hedgerow. And lots of soups call for a celery or a celery-like um, ingredient. So this will do the job nicely. So we're gonna put some of our young Alexander shoots. And if you're not familiar with Alexander's, do go back to episode one, do go back and have a look at what we've said about them, how to identify them, um, because they're a real treat and keep us going through the winter months as a staple green. Oh, they just smell so good. Oh, I do love them. Honestly, if you've never ever had Alexander's in your diet, it's time to start putting them in. They are just so wonderful. In you go. So look at all these beautiful green ingredients that are going in, even though we are in November. In you go, right. Okay, now, the channel rack will have a natural salt content to it. So I'm not gonna add additional salt, but I am gonna put in some um, stock powder. So this is just a vegetable stock. You could use whatever you had at home. Or if you didn't have any, you could use a little bit of salt, but I like to use a stock cube. In you go. Mix it around. 
hand. Oh, yeah. Now, two things we've got to do. We've got to add our noodles. So we're just going to break them up. Look how messy I am. I'm the messiest cook. Right, put those in. Break them up. It's a good student food. If you're a student, you've always got these in the cupboard. So put your noodles in. Now these noodles take four minutes to cook. They're very, very quick. So they're in. And on top of all of that, this is where we're going to place our dumplings. So we're going to put those on. And what we're looking for is really, because there's no flour in there, we just need the egg to cook. So again, that's not going to take a very long time at all. So we're putting all those on top of the pan, pop them in here. And then we're just going to pop the lid back on there and let that sit for about eight to nine minutes at the top. And then we're going to take them out and present them to you in a beautiful bowl. So it's been about nine minutes. I can smell this wonderful smell coming off the pan. All the steam's coming up. Take the lid off, ready to serve. Now, let's have a look inside. That is looking good. Turn off the oven. Boop. Ding. All done. Right. Being very careful. I'm going to take our wonderful, oh, it's just the steam. Take the dumplings out in a minute. I'm just going to get enough of this noodly green mallowy soup into the bowl first with our liquid. And then I'm going to place some dumplings in there. Now I am a greedy guts, so I'm going to go for, I'm going to go for three in mine. Lush. Now just to add a bit on top here. I have a bit of lemon, so I'm going to squeeze a bit of lemon just to freshen it up a little bit. And then I'm going to place on some of our beautiful fresh sorrel leaves that we also talked about in episode one. This fresh, gorgeous lemony leaf, which will complement the squeeze of lemon on the top. And that just gives us a, a fresh salad leaf bite. Some little tiny um, hedge bed straw leaves that we spoke about in the film today. They're going to give us a little bit of decoration and they're also going to give us that gorgeous pea-like flavour. So it's almost like putting little microgreens on top of the dish. Just there. And then just a little tiny few snips of our baby plantain leaves because they're going to give us that mushroomy, meaty sort of flavour. Just snip those almost like you would snip a herb over the top. And there you have your beautiful warming November Bavarian noodle wild stew with wild spiced dumplings. Now, all I want to say about this is if you're going to Cafe Abundance and you're going and looking in their boxes, you'll see you have lots and lots of bread on offer. Bread that's slightly going stale, slightly out of date. This is a really, really good recipe to use up that bread. So do look at local food services, do look at what's out there and find some creative ways to get wild ingredients into these things, into this food that would have not normally gone to waste because this is a delicious November dish. <laughs>